Outstanding, the ultimate accolade for teachers. We challenge secondary history teacher Esther Arnott to go from good to outstanding. A top inspector observes one lesson. Two experts will fine tune her practice and help improve her presentation. She also gets comments and advice from teachers across the country who've seen her lesson on the web. Esther then has two weeks to put all the advice into action before the inspector comes back for the final verdict. Every single person on here says something different about the lesson. It's been really useful. On the other hand, it's kind of like, oh, it's quite kind of personal. It's in, in your space. It's in, it's in your kind of classroom, even though you don't even know this person. Lampton School is a large mixed comprehensive in West London, close to Heathrow Airport. Esther Arnott is a history teacher in her fourth year of teaching. My previous job was working in PR. I used to think it was hard going having a, a deadline in the next you know, couple of weeks and working towards that, but um, teaching you have seven deadlines a day. Right guys, let's get sorted please. Open your books on a fresh page. On a good day, I love the fact you can't predict what's going to happen, but that can also be the worst thing about teaching as well. Uh, has anyone got Sanjay's book? The history department rates her teaching as good. I think one of Esther's main strengths is I would always say an absolute passion for what she, she teaches. This thing goes on a horse. Esther will focus the challenge of getting to outstanding with her year sevens. I think what's interesting about the class is the very, very broad range of abilities. Um, and the class as a whole is very enthusiastic and very lively, which is good, but also have poses its own challenges. Hey okay, everyone, look this way, I think you're getting on well. Yeah, she's really nice. She gives out merits really easily. She's not too strict, but she is firm when she needs to be. OK, so it's really good that you're talking to each other and describing. Whenever we work, she explains things well, so we understand what she's talking about. What do good historians do? Can you remember from the very start of the course? Do they always ask questions? I don't expect to be the creme de la creme, no way near. I'm certainly not consistent in the amount of time I put into planning versus the amount of time I put into marking. I'm certainly not consistent in the way I actually differentiate my lessons. I think that for Esther it's going to be to learn to let go a little bit of the students learning. I think part of the challenge for Esther is to understand that they don't always need a safety net. Esther's planning her next lesson on the Norman Conquest. The kind of resources that I, I need to plan for are for my uh, EAL students, I need to make sure that they can access this, this idea of conquest. It's trying to make it obvious through pictures. I've then got to think about the character cards to write and how to make them accessible for all, but the more challenging, more detailed breadth and range of information, so the more able to understanding the nuances of the past. It's the morning of Esther's observation. With hundreds of inspections under her belt, school inspector Claire Gillies leads teams up and down the country. She certainly knows an outstanding lesson when she sees one. OK, guys, right, you need to listen very carefully. So... Esther has 45 minutes to impress our inspector with her lesson on the impact of William the Conqueror on the English. I am now William the Conqueror, OK? Here we are. <laughs> William the Conqueror. I'm glad you found it funny, Palmville. I feel silly. Now. William the Conqueror, I cannot speak in a French accent. Uh, I'm not very good when I speak French, but I am now ruling your country and I am taking over. I might be horrible to you, but I might be nice to you. When she put on the crown, it was really funny. It's like, it wasn't in a history lesson anymore. We actually felt like we were there. What I'd like you to do, I'm not gonna wear this anymore, is I would like you, <laughs> in your pairs or in your groups, you should all find in front of you an envelope. By the end of the task, you should be able to tell me whether William meant your life was better 
or meant your life was worse. Bonnie yeah. says, I've heard that William and his soldiers are burning down people's homes. It's been very bad in the north of England and in the south. There are people starving and dying for, from hunger. That's what suffering. suffering most. And these two, I think the one that 10,000 people died the most. Oh, let, me, let me just reach out. I think we should get rid of that heading as well. Because yeah, no one really benefited that much. Change it, stop with the lease. One people was uh, in charge of the church and uh, William took, uh, took his job to his friends. He gave it to his friends. But what tells you the people of England were happy? Yeah, like People like going to church? Yeah. OK, year seven. Um, if I put on this marvellous time-travelling crown again... Now... Um, I am now William. Are you going to tell me that you like me or that you hate me? I don't want to spend a lot of money. And besides, I need a little more money, so I need some more work. Well done, Majid. And he got into royal. Round of applause for Majid. That was fantastic. Well done. Um, Carolina, why do you like me? Uh, because I met one of your soldiers and I fall with him in love. Oh! Look for any evidence that maybe the English are getting a better life too. It's never black and white. It's always a bit multicoloured and a bit tangled. <laughs> Find the detail for me. Oh, Miss, no what sentence yeah. can we do for this one then? Oh, now you can decide. How about you say there were some things which were good and bad? 50-50. Yeah, and then explain why you think that. So, headline number one. Please vote if you like headline number one. Evil comes to England. All right, that could be a headline. Second headline, out, 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 William must go. Last but not least, from bad to good, William gets better. Ooh. Please, will you put your books in a pile in the middle of your desk? So how did Esther get on? Well, thank you very much, Esther, for letting me watch that Norman Conquest lesson. And oh. certainly for me, the, the highlight, and I'm sure they're going to go out remembering, it was you putting the crown on oh. and talking <laughs> with that um, wonderful sort of Awful French accent. accent. No, it, uh, it really got them thinking, and you could just see how they were all absolutely hooked. So that was a brilliant idea, and certainly I'm going to you know, plunge straight in and say that there were lots of uh, undoubtedly outstanding elements within the lesson. And the one thing that perhaps holds it back from being outstanding was if I look at the tables, there were two tables who weren't, they were getting there but a bit slowly yeah. and a bit switch off yeah. when you weren't yeah. doing that gentle nudging. Yeah. And I was trying to think how could you have simplified that more? What I should have done in hindsight is perhaps spent more time at the front end with those two tables being absolutely clear of their steps through the lesson. I want them to kind of, you know, mm. be, be responsible for their own learning. But and I, I just put down that always hard to generate independent learning skills yeah. with all abilities. Yes. I thought the quality of debate in at least three of the tables mm. was absolutely great. The fact that they actually changed the wording on the, the sheet you gave them. They didn't want to have um, benefited but just suffered less. And it shows what real thinking was going on on that table. I, I was absolutely thrilled. That's a little kind of um, eureka moment, if you like, for, the, for those students in the sense that they were really pushing me on, which was excellent. It would have been just lovely at the end to sort of have a quick reflection to modern times. Just remember yes. that now, just as in the past. Yeah. But there was so much that was great. Thank you very much indeed. No, thank you for coming. Look forward to seeing the next one. Oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> thank you. With the first observation over, the inspector highlighted Esther's need to keep all students equally engaged, shaping the structure of her lessons to enable the students to be more effective, independent learners. It's time to bring on the experts. To boost Esther's progress, help comes from secondary history expert Michael Riley and voice and communications coach Ulrika Schulterbauchlo. in a French accent. They start by watching Esther's lesson. I might be horrible to you, but I might be nice. 
Great to see the impact of Esther in role and the way in which the class kind of light up. I think in general she's a brilliant communicator. Mm. Are you going to tell me that you like me or that you hate me? But what I noticed is that she actually is restricting herself, particularly this kind of hand rubbing and so mm. on. Um, and this has also an effect on her voice. In your pairs or in your groups you should all find... In I think there are particular things that I'd like to work on with Esther. There was a great chunk in the middle of the lesson of more than 20 minutes where the pupils were focused on one activity and there was some drift at that point. Esther, thinking about uh, your planning mm. uh, and planning for pupil engagement yeah. and, and challenge in the learning, and instead of thinking about uh, organising learning around key questions mm. for individual lessons, we place this lesson in a broader sequence of learning yes. around uh, what we would call um, uh, an inquiry question, a historical inquiry question, mm. where we start with uh, the question, yep. the inquiry question, as opposed to, and it might be the same one, just broaden out. Right. Um, but then we, we, we think how individual lessons then can be sequenced, best sequenced, so that by the end of it, um, pupils have answered this important big historical question. Yeah. The key to this is making sure that we're setting out at the beginning of this process mm. with um, a historical question yeah. that is valid, that is, has historical rigour, that is engaging for students. You know, questions like um, how did uh, Anglo-Saxons react to the yeah. Norman invasion, yeah. Yeah? or what was the impact of the Norman conquest mm. on English people. Yeah. Uh, and that then, in the end, we can define an end product yes. that will enable students to answer this question, yeah. enable them to engage with it, uh, and is a really interesting thing for them to produce. In order to be outstanding, I, I personally believe that I need to differentiate, and I need to differentiate for the you know, three or four different groups of abilities, if mm. you like. One of your great strengths as a teacher is your inclusion. Perhaps, ironically in a sense, you are uh, doing that um, at the expense of whole class teaching. So instead of planning one big task, think about planning sequenced activities that take pupils up deeper into the inquiry, more complex levels of understanding. Yeah. And within each one, providing some extra challenge, providing some extra support for those students who need it. That's really useful. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's incredibly useful. Yeah. I might be horrible to you, but I might be nice to you. The other dimension, teaching, that I think would be really good to build on, your willingness to go into role, oh. <laughs> <laughs> which here was great, you know, because it added drama to the lesson. Yeah. And I think there are a lot more ways in which, as history teachers, we can add drama to our lessons and avoid pupil drift. Yeah. The fact that, you know, if you hunt in the king's forest, mm. what do you think happens to you? Yeah. You lose two fingers. Mm. Yeah. Pause. Do you know what happens I to you if you caught a second time? No. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes are gouged out. Yeah? yeah? And it's at moments like that, really, when you have kind of total engagement. Yeah. And some of that can be elicited from them, yeah? yeah? Who's found something really scary on mm. their cards? Yeah? Yeah. And take that as your, your, your way in. I like it now is to take your feet a bit further than shoulder wide. Yeah, yeah. Stretch your right hand, raise up, and bend over. To your Esther and Ulrika loosen sure up before working on Esther's hand rubbing. Nose. Don't hold your breath. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Keep your hands folded. Put all the tension flowing out of me. <laughs> Good. So now comes my little surprise. Okay. <laughs> I have here. Two balloons okay. for you. <laughs> yeah. And what I like you is to put one underneath this arm, okay. one underneath that arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Underneath. I can't touch my hands anymore. You can't touch your hands. <laughs> so, I like you now just to say something using your hands just in front of your body. <laughs> yeah. Get your hands up. Yeah. Yeah. And over to you. Okay, year seven. Good morning. Ah, different. Do it again. Yeah. Stretch it. And. Okay, Year 7. Good morning. Fantastic. So now, we just try now to take the balloons out mm -hmm. 
Now, create this big balloon now for the whole class. Okay. And I'd like you to get the attention by saying, OK. Yeah. Good morning, Year 7. How are you? Yeah. Eye contact. Yeah. The last one. Once okay. more. Really go around with your eyes everywhere. Your eyes collect okay. the attention. Good morning, Year 7. How are you today? Ah. <laughs> Thank you. My head after my talk with Michael is swimming in a really good way. I'm going to go back to my medium term plans and begin to see where I can build in these inquiry type questions that could hopefully get me onto a winning, a winning solution. With her final observation just weeks away, Esther's back to the classroom to put all the advice into action and work towards raising her game. I'm just going to show you something and you have to just watch it, OK? Well, what I've set up is a, a three-week or a six-lesson inquiry. And this inquiry is asking um, what can we find out from computer games about medieval warfare. Your task is to spot the objects that you've just been looking at in these pictures. I was really thrilled with how excited they were to be looking at the different computer games and seeing what history those games can teach them. Gauntlet, good man. What type of gauntlet is it? Are you sure? The, the way I've broken it down is to first of all start with the computer games and then I get them to try and sort of nail it down a bit more about what are the elements of warfare we're, we're seeing. Can you put the objects you've found into three groups? You could study uh, mm -hmm. the time period, the weapons, the armour and the castles, then compare it to the game's information. Wow. That is fantastic, Ricardo. You're going to study weapons, castles and armour and compare it to what we see in the game. My body language, initially I felt myself go, Ooh, and then I really concentrated on trying to um, sort of keep my hands apart and be dancing with my hands. So, when we come on to um, test what you have learnt from these computer games about medieval history, the way I'm going to sort of assess your understanding is I'm going to get you to write letters to the people who designed the games. At the end, I sort of grabbed a few of them and said, so what do you think of writing a letter? Are you excited about writing a letter? Yeah, no? They were like, yeah, it's OK. And I'm really worried about that now because the whole point of the, the work I did with, with Michael Riley was looking at making sure the students are not only engaged by the inquiry, but that they are motivated by the end task. In the two weeks since her observation, teachers all over the country and beyond have been watching Esther's observed lesson on the web and leaving their comments. It's funny to see that lots of people have picked up on my body language and there's been a little bit of a debate about that between different contributions as to whether it's distracting or whether it's not. And uh, particularly important feedback is about the plenary. The plenary in my first lesson was rushed, as someone highlighted on the website. It wasn't necessarily done with enough time to allow true consolidation of learning and I think that's a really crucial thing to work on because if you don't consolidate learning when they come back it's all gone. Now seeing sort of the quality of feedback on, on the website I think this could be a really good forum to help me work out what to do in terms of the product of my inquiry. The children weren't so engaged by the idea of writing to the computer company so what I could do is post on here and ask people for their advice. What I absolutely love about being a history teacher is that idea that you can open up that world of possibility. People who have tried things, people who have experimented, people who have, you know, tried and failed, but you learn from that and you can learn from the people of the past. Um, really, really useful web feedback from some people about how to assess and that's what I'm putting out at the moment. Um, I'm actually giving the students complete choice. On that piece of paper, you've got some options. It says at the top, put a tick next to the one you liked the most. What you've got is a list of ways that I could be assessing you at the end of this unit. 
after we choose which one we want to do, can we actually do it? You will be, yeah. So I'm giving you the chance to choose how you are assessed completely. It's your choice. Podcast. Magazine. Magazine. Movie. Website. No, that's really interesting, actually. I think, um, I think probably the thing I'm most surprised by is that they're willing to put themselves out there and as a result I think variety is the key and this has shown me that that um, the more variety you can build in where it's possible especially at key stage three um, the better. Today we are going to study medieval armour. I'm not just going to show you some pictures of it and go what do you think because that would be boring. I'm going to get you to make some. The really excellent thing so far from having an inquiry-based approach is the engagement. They are sort of on tenterhooks, ready and waiting. And, you know, I've got students coming up to me with, you know, computer games saying, I looked at this again when I was at home last night. That involvement is, is fantastic. Hello, Michael. Hello, Michael. It's Esther here. How are you? Esther talks through her lesson plan before tomorrow's second observation. One of my big worries, if you like, is um, having too much of a focus on um, the game aspect of building a castle rather than getting them to understand how this teaches them about castles changing over time. I think there is a danger of that and I think it'll be really, really important at the beginning of the lesson to make it really clear why they're doing this. And then again, at the plenary, you really tie this in to the overall inquiry, which is interpretations focused. The important thing is for pupils to realise that they're studying these games as an interpretation of history. OK. Thank you so much. <laughs> this has been really, Not really helpful. I actually think that I won't get an outstanding because uh, I've... I've almost had to take two steps back in order to move forwards. It's the day of Esther's final observation. Claire Gillies is back and it's crunch time. We've been studying this question, what can we learn from computer games about medieval history? With all that expert advice and weeks of practice behind her, can Esther make it from good to outstanding? Okay, so today we're actually going to investigate the final little piece of the puzzle and that is castles. What can we learn from computer games about castles? So without further ado, let's look at the real history of castles. In your pairs, you are going to become master castle builders. Okay, first set of instructions. The year is 1066. William the Conqueror has just won the Battle of Hastings to become King of England. But in many parts of England, the people don't want him there. So he decides to build a castle. But he says it must be built really quickly and he's only got wood and earth or soil to do it. You've got one and a half minutes, work together, design your castle, master builders, off you go. So can I do it? And, and, and over here, if we do the lines again like that. Like that. Could you hold your boards up so I can see your designs, please? This one at the back, can you all look at that one for a second? Can you see how they've really done exactly what William said? But times are changing, builders. It's now 1081. Your castles are being burnt to the ground, but now you've got stone. Since we've been learning about medieval warfare, I think the lessons have been more different because we're doing more practical work and it's more fun and you learn more by doing it. Next step, it's 11.26 now. Some English people dun, 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 have worked out that they can make your stone castle collapse. Oh dear. What have we got in mind? Well, so we have the um, stone here. We put two bricks with like heavy ones. Mm -hmm. So you add more. Put your hand up if you added something like a wall or a moat, like some water. Deary me, you're pretty good. Maybe you won't get your heads chopped off. Well done. I did learn a lot because I didn't know the dates that the castles were being used and created. Thumbs up if it's true, thumbs down if it's false. Number one. All castles in history are made of wood. False, super duper. 
wooden castles had to be replaced by stone? Mm. True. Well done. There was only one type of castle design ever. False. Well done. But here is the real challenge. The computer games we've looked at were set in 1191. Were round towers invented then? No. Were multiple walls around the castles invented then? So these computer games are not necessarily teaching you the real history. And you're going to explain this by writing some sentences which will ultimately help you in your final assessment, OK? Why do computer games maybe get things wrong? What is the purpose of a game? Some people don't want to learn about history, they just want to play the game for fun. Yes, spot on. We can learn history from so many different sources. And if you're going to be super historians, you need to compare them. OK, so remember that. So has all Esther's hard work paid off? Esther, thank you very much for letting me come to that Year 7 lesson, and I enjoyed it a great deal. Good. And if I stand back and reflect on the fact that this was Year 7, mm. and what did they go out at the end of the lesson having learned, I think they yeah. certainly got it. So I think the learning was outstanding, so we can say that your teaching was outstanding. And oh, I'll so now <laughs> give you a lovely long list of the things that I felt made that happen. If you remember last time when they were in groups, mm. some of the groups definitely That's weren't right. so keen and yeah. didn't get on so well, but this time everybody, most of the time, was really giving good. thought and, and joining in. So yeah. let's highlight some of the real strengths. The good reflection at the beginning of the lesson, back right. to, you know, this yeah. is what we've been doing and where we're going. We had some good pace generated by the sort of lovely, you know, if you're not quick you might get your head chopped off. Yeah. That adds a touch of Authentic, I'm sure, yeah. is still there. <laughs> Everybody wrote quite a lot. Yes. Related to their ability level. Yeah. The lovely idea at the end that we were super historians, mm. they're always comparing. Certainly they, they got that. So there was absolutely a wealth of, you know, things that they got out of it mm. that they mastered during it. And they're going to go on, I hope, to be sort of brilliant historians. I hope um, so. And thank you very much for letting me share that enjoyable lesson. No, thank you so much for your feedback. It's been incredibly useful. When she said there was outstanding learning going on and therefore there must have been outstanding teaching, I actually couldn't believe it. Really kind of uplifted because I'm realising that I don't need the shackles of 25 different resources. See what they come up with and that's, that's what, as much as it's scary, it's kind of empowering and uplifting as well because it's them that I've got to lead forwards and, and that's exciting.